Now that we have that background and some context, let's take a look at some of the highlights in Chapter 1 of the Burnell text. After reviewing this chapter, uh, you should be able to explain the types of relationships studied by a health economist. Describe how health economics is used to evaluate and inform public policy. Identify health policy topics that can benefit from economic analysis. And lastly, explain essential microeconomics assumptions related to the consumer, producer, and payer. Burnell describes the role of an economist as a social scientist uh, who studies specific kinds of relationships. Relationships that typically involved consumers, and in this case, we identify them as patients, Producers, such as doctors, nurses, clinical staff, hospitals, and pharmaceutical companies. And lastly, payers, such as insurance companies, both private and public. Uh, example, that would be Medicare and Medicaid, uh, and patients themselves. As we will see in Chapter 5, when we review the demand for health care, factors influencing consumer demand may include the price of the good or service, the time it takes to use or acquire that good or service, one's age, income, uh, the taste and preferences of that individual, uh, quality of the product, health status, health insurance status, the education of the individual and or lifestyle of that person. Are they smokers? Do they exercise? And things of that nature. Economics provides a toolkit that allows us to anticipate or predict how a change in one factor, such as health insurance coverage, will influence something else, such as the utilization of a health care good or service. Econometrics is a subspecialty of economics that applies appropriate mathematical and statistical uh, techniques to analyze relationships. So in the field of health economics, uh, we have subjects that include physicians and other providers, uh, patients or a particular group of patients, health-related goods and services such as surgery, preventive care, diagnostic testing, and pharmaceuticals, hospitals, clinics, and other types of facilities, and private and public insurance companies. Uh, in economics, we find that it is often linked to policy, and health economics can be used to evaluate whether a policy is working as planned, a policy revision is needed, a new policy is needed to address a disparity or unmet need, uh, or a policy has unintended consequences. And throughout this course, we will be addressing the economics related to the Affordable Care Act, or the ACA as it's called, and its effect on insurance premiums, uh, health insurance of low-income individuals, physician, physician income, uh, utilization of preventative services, uh, just to name a few. So, in economics, uh, we deal in a number of terms and assumptions, and one of those terms is utility, uh, which is defined as a measure of satisfaction for a good or service. Uh, utility is a function of an individual's health and the other goods and services one has. Individuals want to maximize their utility and the, the implication individuals want to purchase more health-related goods and services to achieve better health status and to maximize utility. In general, in economics, individuals are assumed to maximize utility or satisfaction subject to their time and budget constraints. This goes back to the idea that we live in a world of scarcity and we have only so many hours in a day and limited budgets. And they make purchasing decisions based on the utility they gain from the prices of those goods and services and the amount of money they can spend on those goods and services. When it comes to production, it is assumed that most producers 
want to maximize profit and minimize the cost of production. Though we will see in healthcare, some providers will want to maximize either the quality or the quantity of the services provided. In really competitive markets, individual sellers take the prices given by the market. That's one general assumption. However, in healthcare, where we have a few or sometimes one provider of a good or service, those sellers can set the price consistent with price maximization. In most markets, prices are determined by what Burnell refers to as an informal dance between buyers and sellers. And we'll explore this concept in much greater detail throughout the course. However, in healthcare markets, prices are not necessarily determined by consumers and producers. They are often determined by payers, including insurance companies such as Medicare, Medicaid, and other institutions, or by individual producers themselves when they have considerable market power. In practice, in really competitive marketplaces, consumers have access to all available information. In healthcare, where there is not always great transparency regarding prices, consumers and producers have unequal information. There's also major government involvement, as in other sectors of the economy. However, it is not as extensive as it is in healthcare, and we will continue to, to see this uh, throughout the course. Here ends the presentation for Chapter 1, Part 3.